Welcome back, everybody, to another Saltivation session, another rant, salty rants. This time, we're going to give you a part two on the Colorado retail delivery fee while you probably know the info, the facts about it. Um, there are some nuances that we wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that are not super um, super helpful to clients. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues here. So yeah, as, uh, as, as we've discussed in previous videos, um, the retail delivery fee in Colorado has been around for a couple of years at this point. It was a moronic thing to start with in the, you know, to begin with, because they created a whole brand new mechanism, uh, to collect this fee when one functioning mechanism already exists. I think it's called the sales tax. Uh, but, uh, that's, that's an aside and we've covered that background before the new news is that now the Department of Revenue is sending out account closure notices to everybody who meets the small seller exception, uh, small business exception uh, under the new Senate bill, something or other. Um, one of my colleagues will correct me because I'm on my rant. Um, and uh, and a lot of these uh, open accounts are, are being closed. Now, the beautiful thing about this is that we worked our ass off to get all this, these mechanics implemented during the last couple of years when this idiotic law became uh, 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 enforceable to begin with. So all these systems were set up. All this work in the background was done. Uh, you know, everybody using uh, web portals like uh, Shopify and Magento <clears throat> as, a, uh, as their um, carts, as their e-carts had to figure out how to make this thing work, how to collect it in their ERP systems, how to get the thing on the invoice. A lot of effort was done. And now all of a sudden, poof, we have a notice. Oh, psych, you don't need this account anymore. We're closing it. <laughs> what the f Colorado? <laughs> what the f So, fair. 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 Thanks, Alex. So, the... Retroactivity relates to, you know, you could follow a, a separate episode, but in case you don't feel like searching your search history to all our avid followers, um, you can, there's a $500,000 taxable sale into Colorado exemption that you, it's kind of the small business exemption or small seller exemption that you no longer have to collect the retail delivery fee. So some of the issues that we're running into is like Alex had said, is a lot of the businesses and, you know, cart collector vendor Shopify being one of them, putting in a lot of effort to create the system to collect the 27 now effective July 1, 28 cents for Colorado. Um, and now Colorado is kind of automatically closing some of those accounts when there's kind of twofold of, well, thanks, but I'd rather just collect it so I don't have to monitor it. So now I got to go through the backlog of, I've implemented the system. It's easier to just maintain it versus work with my IT to renege it and then potentially have to implement it again. Not great. Um, but also I collected it. I was kind of behind the ball because business happens, life happens. I've collected it. I have to remit it. How am I going to remit it? And, you know, I believe Shopify collects it automatically. We have a lot of vendors that use Shopify plus and that 27 cents automatically appeared on your invoices so that, you know, its users could be compliant. Um, I'm not sure yet as of the date of the recording that they have created an option to not collect it. Right. And so it's possible that it's automatically being collected and people are unaware of this, of this thing. We made a big deal out of it a year ago, over a year ago, and now we're trying to kind of modify it accordingly. So it's just, again, another challenge related to um, kind of some of the things that happened in Colorado that, you know, hopefully the Minnesotas and the New York, New York cities of the world are paying attention to in almost any legislation that like it's really hard to you know, thank you, but retroacting law is really difficult. 
for compliance purposes. There's not like a toggle switch that exists where you you, you, you could you could flip it on and off on a daily basis, right? There is a lot of manpower and uh, and, and systems that that drive these things in the background. Um, it's really challenging for taxpayers to to flip these things on and off like that. And who knows how long it's going to take Shopify to to put that toggle in there to to uh, to turn it off for small uh, small businesses, small sellers that meet the exception. Right, right, and then we're, they're still then strapped with the compliance issue, right? Which is okay. Colorado went ahead and closed my account. Thank you very much. Not really, because I still need to remit the money, and it's still being collected because my software, you know, systems are trying to keep up, but they can't. So it seems like a good thing, but the retro to Meredith's point is. It's tough on taxpayers. Putting yeah. it in place is tough. Figuring it out is tough. And then being the whoopsies. Nope. We're taking this away now. A retro basis then just makes it even worse. Well, and as a, I, I'm a payer of this fee, right? I live in Colorado and I get stuff shipped to me all the time. Um, like, I, I think it's just really difficult to... And kind of realistically for any jurisdiction is when you have legislation that happens and they're the, they're the responsible ones and they get the bad news and they got to figure out their systems. They got to figure out gen tax to, to do all these things to be compliant. So there is, you know, I'm sure the department doesn't love the retroactivity on that either because they have to go in and update their systems. They also have to respond to all the queries that are coming in through revenue online to reopen these accounts and. You know, so it's a lot of work on their end, too, that I can only imagine that they're kind of like ranting in their way, you know, similarly within the department. Uh, I think that the, the point is, you know, retroactivity is the devil. Um, and that, that's a whole nother topic of discussion that, that this profession has been grappling with for a really long time um, in, in lots of areas. Um, and we really need longer runways. Right. I, I think, you know, kudos to the Minnesota Department uh, uh legislature and the Department of Revenue for having, I think, a year and a half runway for uh, Minnesota's retail delivery fee. So, you know, that is uh, more time to get the systems in place, to get the, the marketing out, to get, you know, to drive awareness, to prepare people, right? Um, it's also potentially longer for them internally to troubleshoot what some of these issues might be. Um, I, you know, I, I, I don't have a crystal ball. I, you know, we can just play Monday morning quarterback here. Um, is that the expression Monday morning quarter? I don't know. Or I'm sure quarterback, whatever. Um, and, you know, and, and, and criticize, uh, these actions, but, you know, had, had perhaps taking a little more time to think this through, maybe could have prevented some of this. Um, I, I don't know. I think that's the that's the kind of summary, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, we should shake our head at <laughs> these things. The cardinal answer of any salt professional is it depends. Right. It depends. We'll get back to you because it's it's you never know. That's correct. And we'll just start to see more and more states probably put one of these into place. And maybe Minnesota has learned some lessons from Colorado and other states will learn lessons from each other in this. We can only hope. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for, thanks everyone for bearing with us and we'll see you next time. Bye.